Hello, my dear Confused Tenor Society. Guten Tag. We are back in Germany. Uh, this time, I want to talk about two rules when it comes to singing. And at this point in my career, this is really the only thing I am really thinking when I'm on stage and I'm singing. I just have these two rules in mind, which I think helps because sometimes when we're in a practice room or or when we're with the teacher practicing vocal technique, it can get sometimes overwhelming and frustrating to try to understand and grasp every single concept. And there are quite a lot of concepts when it comes to the voice, the chiaro, the scuro, the laryngeal uh, position, the relaxation of the jaw, the tongue, the poggio, the diaphragm, breathing, the vowels, the legato, it can get a lot. But now I've come to realize after a lot of years of doing this, that there's really only two things that I think about. And I think this is really gonna help a lot of you because it, it dumbs things down. It keeps it simple. And integrating these two concepts to your singing, I think it's really gonna make you a more versatile, flexible, and relaxed singer. Because these two rules that I'm about to share with you have everything to do with relaxation in the sound and allowing the vocal cords to stretch and thin as we ascend. And with that being said, that is rule one. So that is the first thing that I think about when I'm on stage singing. Rule number one, the vocal cords need to stretch and thin as we ascend and they return to their normal resting position as we descend. I have here one of my kids little toys. I brought it back from United States to Germany just for this video. Um, the vocal cords are by nature very rubbery, very stretchy, okay? We need to take advantage of this elasticity in the voice. And we need to allow this natural process of thinning and stretching as we ascend in our range and going back to their resting position as we descend. Here's the catch. Your body naturally wants to do this. The vocal cords want to do this. This is a natural process. But the problem is that at some point, most of us corrupt this process. We get in our own way. And the goal to achieve is to allow this natural process of thinning and stretching as we ascend to happen without any corruption, without any interception or any muscular tension on our part. We do this very naturally when we do something like a siren in which we go from our chest voice to our head voice and to falsetto. And that's the catch. The catch is allowing the voice to switch between these registers whenever it wants to. The problem is that most of us who are training opera have been ingrained in our minds that you have to be in chest 100% all the time. You should never switch. And when you adopt that mentality, you're not allowing the vocal cords to stretch and thin as freely as they can. So everything becomes effortful. When we switch from chest to head to falsetto, surrendering ourselves to what the voice wants to do, we're gonna get a much more naturally healthy, effortless sound. So for example, I'm allowing the body to do this process naturally. I am getting out of the way and allowing the cords to stretch and thin. The problem is that most of us, perhaps we start right, but at some point we tense. Whether it's here or or it's here or or it's here or or wherever it is, most of us that are having problems with high notes or with heft or weight in our sound or a sound that just sounds effortful, we are tensing at some point in this process. We need to allow ourselves 
to relax into this. And this is where the idea of the sigh, right? Or this uh, feeling of this cry, the tenor cry, ah, ah, because naturally this sound has a little bit of siren in it. Ooh, ooh, or the sob, ah, ah, ooh. We have to allow the voice to be very flexible, very, our, our phonation process, our attack on the sound needs to be gentle and never with restriction, never with tension. And this, this rule, which I call rule number one, is, is very clear with me. I have, I have had enough experience in this stage to understand that if I'm in a place in which I am allowing the body to do this naturally, then nothing costs me, nothing. You could be singing high C's, high B flats. As long as this process is intact without any muscular tension or corruption on our part, the voice will work like a well-oiled machine. It will just do what it's naturally being allowed to do. Again, the problem is that we get in our own way, whether it's because we're trying to sound darker or because we're trying to put more chest or because our vowels are too muddled or whatever it is, we need to prepare the sound and get out of the way. Do not distort it. And this is also how you'll find your natural, honest sound. So I want this video to be a little bit more interactive. So try it. Try this three times from the lowest part of your range to the absolute highest part of your range and surrender yourself to what the voice wants to do. If it switches to falsetto, switch to falsetto. It will switch to falsetto. I'm telling you right now, it will. Start from your lowest part of your range in a gentle chest voice. Uh, and as you ascend, try to keep this mental picture of your cord stretching and thinning. Never feeling like you have to reach for the high note. No. If anything, <laughs> your low notes are not here and your high notes are not here. If anything, it's not a vertical concept. It's a horizontal concept in which everything is in the same plane. Think about the chords stretching and thinning. So gentle chest sound at the very, very bottom. And as you ascend, switching to head, to falsetto, whenever the voice wants it to. And try doing this in an oo vowel. The oo vowel is a great vowel, especially when training and developing the falsetto as a tool because it naturally elongates the laryngeal tube. So let's do this three times. Again. Again. As you're doing this, take your time with it. You'll notice that I'm not just, woo! I'm not just going quickly. I'm taking my time. And this is the best thing you could do as you're training the voice. Feel, connect with your body. Feel what's happening internally. What is opening? What is switching? How does it feel like to you? What words would you describe it? What kind of terminology would you use? This way you're training this mind-body connection so that when you do go out to sing in a stage where you have blocking words, you're looking at the conductor, you're doing staging, you're fighting, you're dancing, you have the costumes, you have to go up the stairs, down the stairs. There's so many other things that you're gonna be thinking about when you're on stage. This process should just be automatic, very automatic. Also, having this mind-body connection will tell you perhaps where you are tensing. If you're having a hard time doing this exercise or going all the way to your highest point, the most likely reason is because you're either staying in one register for too long, not allowing the chords to just switch to falsetto or head voice, or perhaps you're also not making the preparation at the beginning. Whenever we sing, we need to prepare. 
there's my onset. And I've talked about the onset before in my previous videos in which I feel the palate raising, the larynx gently lowers, I have my space to sing, and now I get out of the way. Always do your preparation. If you found that this exercise feels tense, then we're onto something. There's a problem wherever it might be, whether it's here, 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 in which we are getting in our own way. We are putting muscular tension in the process, in this natural process of the vocal cord stretching and thinning. And we need to find a way to relax wherever that part of the range is in order for the sound to be free. If you found that you're a little bit tense, there's also this exercise. Start around A flat. We're gonna do an octave on an U vowel, everything in falsetto, everything in falsetto. Do that about again three times as a siren. Find the depth in the sound, find the relaxation. Remember, we are still in falsetto. We're using this as a developing tool to find relaxation in the sound in order to stretch and thin the vocal cords. Once you've done that three times, then you move on a half a step higher. Keeping the U vowel very pure, making sure nothing is stuck or in the back of the throat. No. Always this sigh or almost puppy cry. Very gentle on the chords. And you keep on going half a step higher. And go, go as high as you can. As you're, you're gonna realize that, first of all, because it's falsetto, there shouldn't be enough subglottic pressure for you to feel, oh my God, this is hurting me. No, everything is light, everything is, is pressureless. Even up here, you're gonna realize that as you ascend, the sound naturally wants to find more depth and it naturally wants to find more of this verticality, which is why a lot of people talk about this vertical column of space. It's never horizontal, but this, this feeling and this opening of these sort of two forces happening, a forward force and a backward force. If you're able to get to a high F, or even a F sharp, or high G above high C, in falsetto, then I think you have a good grasp of the first rule, which is to, again, stretch and thin. There is no point in your vocal studies to continue on taking different concepts if this is not understood. In other words, if you're having problem with this process of stretching and thinning the chords to get a very relaxed free sound, there is no point whatsoever to continue to the more advanced stuff. Because if a voice is already not free in the phonation process, allowing the chords to stretch and thin, then there's nothing else to do. You have to do step one before you do step two. And this is definitely step one. This needs to be integrated in all your singing, all your arias, when you're singing words and consonants, whether it's forte or pianissimo, you have to have this. So now that we talked about rule one, which is the first thing that I think about when I sing, here's rule two. Because we can't just sing falsetto when it comes to opera. I can't stand in the stage and sing something like Verdi Requiem. I can't do that in stage. Although this is great stretching and thinning 
of the vocal cords. Although this is great, and this is what we want for rule one, for opera or for classical oratorio, we need chord closure. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that I preach about chord closure all the time. And this is rule two, but here's the catch. Here's the catch. Rule two cannot conflict or interrupt rule one. All that means is that if you're adding chord closure, but the amount of chord closure that you're adding is interrupting this process, then you're doing it wrong. You're doing too much. And the general consensus after teaching a lot of people is most people overdo chord closure. The reason why someone like Lauri Volpi or Angelo Loforese has always preached about how singing should feel like falsetto, but it's not falsetto, but it should feel the weightlessness, the lightness to it should feel like falsetto is because the reinforced falsetto sound that's all reinforced falsetto, which we've done in the rule one. That sound is literally in the same plane as the full sound, the full voice. The only thing that connects them is chord closure. As soon as you achieve correct chord closure, you initiate connection to the full sound. You can't have the full sound if you don't have chord closure. And if you have chord closure, you have full voice. It is not falsetto anymore. Falsetto. Full voice. It's all in the same plane. When we achieve chord closure, it should be as minimal as you can, just in order to connect to the full sound, and that is it. Don't do any more. What I want is for you to sing in falsetto. This is the world of falsetto, and this is the world of the full voice, and the connection is this, this touch, just that. It's the same world. The problem is that most people overdo it. And they do too much. So much that they interrupt the first rule of stretching and thinning the cords, of allowing the cords to be free enough to stretch and thin. Because when you start squeezing the cords shut, we can't do that unless we are involving musculature of some kind. There are a lot of concepts in singing that are involuntary. The diaphragm lowering and ascending is technically involuntary. Although we can breathe, and we know that when we take a breath, the diaphragm lowers, the actual process of the movement of the diaphragm, we're not really in control of. It's kind of the same thing as your pupils dilating. You can't control that, it's involuntary. But when it comes to chord closure, that is an intentional movement that you need to do. You need to initiate. Ah, but it's minimal. In order to use the least amount of muscularity possible when it comes to singing. Again, it's not a harsh, abrasive <laughs> chord closure. It's, it's a very light glottal attack. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, 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 falsetto, ah, chord closure, ah, one is connected, one is not, but the feeling of weightlessness is the same throughout both of them. So let's do a little exercise to help us get to rule two without, remember, without conflicting or interrupting the first rule, okay? So we're gonna do what we did before. We're gonna start 
with an OO vowel all in falsetto in order to get rule one again. Okay, rule one is stretching and thinning the chords. So we're gonna do that again. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but with an A vowel, still in falsetto. And again, feeling what's happening internally. The third step is now to add chord closure. But just how we were doing in falsetto, the sensation should be the same. Like I say to all my students, no matter where you are in your range or whatever musical phrase you're singing, you should always be able to get out in a sigh. That's how you know you're in a good spot, in a position that is healthy and free and it costs you nothing. Another thing to note is that your chord closure should be equal and always the same from the lowest part of your note to the highest part of the note. In other words, don't start with open chords. And then as you ascend, you close them. Don't also do the opposite in which you're closing too harshly the bottom, which is really what's most common. And then open the chords at the top. And obviously, the last one is singing with too much chord closure at the bottom, opening the middle, and then singing the top. Mm -hmm. ah! In other words, all this to say is keep the chord closure the same. And it's never too much. It's just enough to connect, and that's it. Remember, connect. Don't overdo it. Connect the two worlds. The bottom should be very gentle. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, tuning in to the exercise we did with falsetto. Uh, that's where I want the sound to be and to feel. Uh, uh, so once you've done that, then you go half a step higher, restarting the process. Remember, U vowel first in falsetto. Then an A, still in falsetto. And then the third step, chord closure, without disrupting the process of stretching and thinning the chords. Continue to do this in this process in order to start developing the falsetto, which is a great developing tool to then link the full voice into. Continue this process until you can connect the full voice in this manner in which you feel flexible, versatile, relaxed and released, just like you do when you sing in falsetto. It feels the same way with the full voice. Never adding too much, never doing any weird thing with the colors or the vowels. The vowels should always be clear, like in Italian. A, E, E. Never too, uh, uh, never too ingolato. A, uh, A, uh, 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 uh. 
if you're able to achieve core closure, you're in full voice. You're in full voice. The problem is that most of you, and I already know, as you try this exercise, you're gonna feel like it costs you nothing. You're gonna feel actually kind of weird because you're gonna think that you're not engaged in your full sound, that you have to put more muscle to re really be engaged because opera requires that. No, again, in the traditional school of bel canto, beautiful singing, not loud canto or forced canto, bel canto. Everything is relaxed, everything is beautiful, and everything is connected, never just falsetto, never singing falsetto, but connected in a way that the approach to faunation is just as gentle as when we sing in falsetto. There will always be subglottic pressure, that never goes away. But there will never be an over amount of subglottic pressure built underneath the vocal cords that should tire you. Sorry, I had to change cameras because for some reason mine overheated. But again, think relaxation. Use imagery like this to help you understand the anatomy that's happening behind opera singing. Chord closure needs to happen, but it needs to be gentle. Air still has to go through the chords, so never overdo it. Never achieve chord closure as if you were lifting weights in a very grunt, in a very gruntal way. That's overdone. You're squeezing shut the vocal cords, and there's so much pressure built up that the air still wants to escape, even though you're shutting the vocal cords as much as you can. And so you get the little grunt sounds, which is air escaping in a very squeezed vocal cord position. No. Ah, 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 ah. With the inflection as tenors always up. Never put a ceiling in your sound. Never block or stop the ability to continue to ascend as you're singing tenor. Again, woo! use these tools, use these exercises to make you a much freer, released singer. I hope these concepts have helped you. I'm actually going to link another video to Maestro Jack Levini, who a lot of people know that I respect really highly, and I agree with everything he says, where he talks about this concept as well in depth, which I think is also going to help a lot of people. So those are the two rules. I hope they have helped you. I hope that you try these at home. Like I always say, this is my methodology. This is what I have learned and experienced throughout my career in singing. If you disagree with it, or if it doesn't work for you, like I always say, you're free to do your own thing. If it doesn't work, throw it away and then continue your search. I always wish the best of luck to all of you in your vocal journey. Keep up the hard work as we start this new season. And remember, the work continues.